Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Storm TV, where we have an exclusive interview with the new head coach of the Manchester Storm, Matt Ginn. Gidda, how are you feeling about the new role? Yeah, I've, I think I've said it many times. I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to getting going here. Um, yeah, just starting to starting to get to work already here, um, talking with agents and players and kind of know the way we want to go in some areas and kind of testing the market. And I'm, yeah, just thrilled. So as you went on quite the journey last season, uh, you, you came back to play in goal once again, but obviously then you got hurt in Coventry. Like, well, tell us about what happened there and everything that kind of happened since. Yeah, it was uh, it was a tough year for sure that way. Um, it started out um, kind of, I don't know, I just didn't feel great like body-wise in the net and after a couple games and just kind of tried playing through it and um, was in talks, got got a cortisone shot there after the first one. Um, I saw the specialist and he said it ne probably needed surgery, but we'd try the cortisone shot and then um, it only lasted kind of a few weeks, I think. And even even then I wasn't really myself. Like there wasn't any power, I guess, in goalie terms to push and kind of, I just didn't feel myself in the net. I couldn't play kind of my game, um, but tried it out. And then the core zone kind of wore off and I kind of threw it again. And uh, when that happened in Coventry, I kind of knew it was done. Um, there was just no real other or um, no real other avenue to go down to get it fixed. And uh, I, could add surgery again and the specialist just said it just kind of keep coming back it could last kind of a year or not even that long so it's just kind of then where we made the decision that it was it was my time and what happened from there because obviously you eventually ended up on the bench uh, helping Finna with the coaching was it Finna who asked you to get involved or was that something that you volunteered for yeah no I uh the first time there when I was hurt I kind of helped out a little bit um, he, he'd asked me there, I th think it was in Nottingham, he texted me and asked if I wanted to stand on the bench that game. And I said, absolutely. So I hopped on and kind of got a, got a bit of a taste what it was like on there. Um, and then after, uh, after the Coventry game there, uh, we kind of talked, I think it was the next day, um, just kind of, he, him and I are really close. So he just kind of talked as a friend, I think first, and then just kind of, yeah, asked if I wanted to move into a coaching role with him and again it was a no-brainer kind of jumped right in and got my foot wet there and I I loved it honestly like it's it sucked not being able to play but I think coaching is kind of the next best thing a great way to stay in the game and um, as the year went on he kind of gave me more and more responsibility um, in practice and during the games and stuff and yeah I just I loved it honestly it was I kind of knew right then and there that's what I wanted to do um, even when I was playing, I, I wanted to, knew like it was getting a little, little long in the tooth and, uh, I knew when I was done playing, I, I wanted to get into coaching and stay in the game. So it was kind of a blessing in disguise, I guess. And how did we go from you helping out on the bench to being offered the head coaching roles? That's something you said actively, I want to do, or did Finna come direct and said, I want to step aside next year, I want you to take over? Yeah, we, we were kind of in talks, uh, the last maybe quarter or third of the season um I knew that he was going to step away or just step back into the GM only role and then we were kind of talking and he asked if it was something I'd be interested in and I said yeah absolutely and he's like well think about it it's a big job and so we we were kind of staying in touch that way and I I knew it's what I wanted to do talk to my fiance and ask permission I guess <laughs> and uh, yeah it was kind of went from there and then I told him I'd absolutely love to love to do it and then um, I, I don't know the exact time frame on that but it was near the end of the season uh, so him and I kind of knew and um, yeah it was an easy decision for me kind of a no-brainer. And you say yeah your fiance is fully on board with this so is she coming with you next season? Yeah yeah she'll be back over again um, she'll get a job over here and we'll kind of make it our home and which is easy we both love Manchester so it's a great spot. So you mentioned before, like coaching is the next best thing to play, but is it something that you've always wanted to do in the, in the long term? I think so. Yeah. I wanted to stay in, involved in the game after I was done playing and um, definitely looked into the coaching stuff. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Long story short. Yes. 
And how will you manage the transition from player to coach with the guys that you're going to bring back from last season? Because I hear that's one of the hardest things about going from player to coach. Yeah, I, I definitely say it's kind of, I would think the hardest thing. I haven't had to really experience it yet, but uh, just talking with Finner and even at playoff weekend, like uh, Adam Keefe there, they both went right into coaching from playing. And uh, I think it'll just be good to kind of have kind of draw the line in the sand right away. And the guys that are coming back, like they're great character guys. I don't see an issue that way. It'll be just more kind of being in that coach's only role. And uh, I, like I said, I, it, for me, it's, it'll be just a mutual respect thing. I want to earn the players trust right away um, and get off to kind of a good start and just know, kind of establish our culture as a team and our identity and, once uh, the first little bit's over, I, I don't see it being an issue. Um, it'll just be right away kind of establishing those boundaries, but still not, not being standoff. It's like I'll have a great relationship with the players and kind of want to be that player's coach, with, but still have kind of a set guidelines and rules and kind of establish, like I said, the culture of a, a winning team. So one of the things that Finn had mentioned um, once we announced that you're going to be head coach, is taking on a guy who played in this league is a major advantage compared to other coaches who'd kind of been shipped in from overseas who haven't really adapted to the league over here. What is it specifically about the UK and the elite league, which is so difficult for these guys that people who've played here can understand? Yeah, I don't know exactly to, to answer your question, but it, it does seem that guys who have been successful in this year, guys who have played like the Andrew Lords and Kiefer, like I mentioned early, Danny Stewart, he's had some good teams there. And I, I don't know if it's uh, just kind of understanding the league maybe a little bit better or kind of trying to find uh, the right players to recruit and bring in. Like it, it seems a little bit odd. There's uh, some of the guys who come in that are big name guys don't really put up the numbers that, that you expect. And then you kind of get a guy like Mike Hammond who kind of came out of, I think, Finner Gama of the SPHL. And uh, he came up and kind of tore it up. So it's it's a little bit different that way, I think. Maybe some guys just need an opportunity and whatnot. But uh, I know the big thing, too, is um, the playoffs, right? It's kind of the regular season's kind of the, the uh, top of the line. Like, that's really your playoffs. And then the playoff weekend, is it happens pretty quick. So there might be a little bit of differences there as guys uh, who kind of come from North America used to the – kind of seven best of seven playoff series and the uh, kind of the emphasis on the playoffs where over here, the, the regular season, you can't, honestly can't take a night off. Like if you have a tough loss early in the, the year, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt later, most likely. And you, you touched on recruitment there. How are you going to handle the recruitment with yourself and Finna? Yeah. He, he told me it's my team. So like, I'll be in touch obviously with him, but I'll bring in the guys that, that I want and we'll, we'll be on the same page. I'm sure with, with a lot of them. Um, I'll try and use kind of my playing experience and made, made a lot of, a lot of acquaintances and friends over the years, been around for a long time. So kind of dip into that well. And I think I have a good understanding of uh, kind of what guy, what kind of guys will be successful over here and um, kind of definitely the, the shape of the team that we want to have here. Hmm. One of the things Ryan mentioned about coaching in the modern day is that the head coach has to be much more hands-on, a lot more working individually with the players. Like, is that the kind of style that you're going to come in with? Like, how would you describe how you're going to coach the team? Yeah, I can't really uh, go back on anything yet, but uh, yeah, I, I think so. Um, like, uh, I definitely have a big passion for coaching and the game of hockey itself, so I always want to learn. Um, like I said, I think goaltending is kind of a unique position position where you see the game from the whole game right in front of you there so I think that'll help to kind of rely on that and then yeah I'll, I'll want to be like a, I guess you, you said a hands-on coach but yeah someone who's pretty detailed um, and guys have like a black and white know uh, what I expect right away um, and then so we'll go from there and you kind of I think that's how you build that culture and uh, the team identity that we talked about earlier. And what is the style of play that you're going to aim to have the Storm playing this season? Yeah, I think uh, definitely speed. Um, the way the hockey is going now is it's all about speed. You don't see kind of those 
six foot five guys who can't move around really well now you, you have to be able to move um you have to be able to skate even in our smaller rink there you you saw some of the guys that with that speed are able to create so much more um we're definitely gonna hopefully limit the number of goals we gave up last year it was just it was too high too on it was unacceptable um but we're gonna play that fast in your face style um physical um but oh again like there will be <clears throat> rules how we play defensively and kind of like that but I want guys to be creative like we'll bring guys that make plays and score goals and that's kind of yeah the the outline right now I guess and I suppose our rink is both one of our strengths and weaknesses over the last few years we've always had a really good home record and we've often struggled away what's your take on that going to be is it going to be to really focus on the home form or we're going to look at getting more points on the road uh, both. <laughs> I do, yeah. both yeah no uh you definitely want to keep that home ice advantage and this rink you, you have to play simple simple and fast and just kind of predictable is how you play here and physical and we'll do that but a lot of those traits is how you want to play on the road too obviously playing going from manchester to nottingham or sheffield the bigger ice you might have to tweak a few things but i i don't think you want to change too much we'll have kind of a blueprint of how we play um we might well we will make some adjustments on the road as well um but it's definitely something that especially with the uh traveling support we get too and like you want to put on a show at home obviously but on the road as well um and those are those points on the road are just as important as the one at, ones at home so it's definitely an area that we're uh, will improve and obviously you're taking over from the man who's moving upstairs um, he's going to be there every week seeing the team. Like, what's your working relationship going to be like, do you think? I, I don't see it being an issue. Um, we're, like I said, we're close. We've had a good relationship since uh, kind of the first year I came here. Um, we're very open with each other. There will be no kind of second guessing. I think we'll both be pretty direct and upfront. And um, hopefully that, that translates on the ice. And I, I think communication is such a big thing, both with your players um, the GM and just knowing kind of what what uh, is expected um, and that's going to kind of be an area of emphasis this year. We often have one of the smaller budgets in the league to work with with regards to recruitment. What are the special characteristics that you're looking to bring in? Not necessarily as the on ice skill, but what are the sort of off ice characteristics you're looking for that would help a player in Manchester? Well, just uh, character is so important. Um, you're with these guys like they're really your brothers during the season you're with them more than your family almost but uh no it, it just character is so huge that team mentality team first um bring in winners right guys who have been there and won um and that that kind of takes uh that is sets a kind of foundation for the culture and like you can never have enough leadership either so i know the returning guys will have or will be leaders and they'll they've been here they know what to expect um, they can help those guys and then that's contagious um, kind of negativity and all that stuff is has no place in the room it's contagious as well and on the other uh, flip side so we're, we'll bring in guys of high character guys who want to work and compete and battle and learn and just kind of team first be there for your teammates stick up for them and that's that's kind of it one characteristic that we've often had with Ryan on the bench these last few years is his uh, rather interesting relationship with the referees. Are we expecting a similar treatment from yourself or are they going to get an easier ride now? It's tough. I, was, I always say it to Finner, like uh, in the net, I was pretty calm talking to the refs and joking around and stuff. And then you're on the bench and uh, it, it's tough to stay calm sometimes. But no, they, they do a good job. They have a hard job. Um, it's, it's definitely the longer you play, you realize how the game's gotten faster. It, it is difficult. Um, definitely don't want to be one of those guys yelling at the refs all game. It doesn't help. I mean, if it doesn't, it never, uh, you don't see them kind of go back and change a call very often, if ever. So no, it, show them respect. They will show you respect. And that's uh, kind of how, how I'll aim to be. And finally, do you have a message for the Storm fans? I just want to say thanks for thanks for the support. The uh, mostly nice messages, like I said earlier, um, I, I'm thrilled. Like the the passion that I have for the team and for the coaching is is through the roof. Uh, I want to learn and get better. Um, just kind of ask for 
I'm not going to promise anything right away, but just we'll, I'll be working hard and the team will be a hardworking team and one that they'll want to get behind and cheer for. Um, and just uh, looking forward to an exciting year in Manchester here. Well, Matt, thank you very much for taking time to speak to me today. Uh, wish you have a great summer. And on behalf of all the, all the Storm fans out there, we hope you have a fantastic season coming up. Awesome. Me too. Thanks, Eden. Thank you.